All right, so I've been thinking of the whole world is interested in, um, in having the fullness of life. You know, to experience total satisfaction, total uh, fulfillment. The whole world wants to experience that life, you know, to live life to the fullest. And not everyone like us believe that there is life after life. You know, in Christ, that when you live, you live. Even though you die, you live. Not everyone thinks like that. They are just thinking of, how can I make the most of my life that I have? We know this life in Christ, is God's plan is not death. But even should a person die, a person die he will live. All right, so people are looking basically for something that the Bible describes as abundant life. I think everyone actually, without maybe naming it abundant life, or, but I think that word abundant life is basically what people desire. That's what, that's what people want. That's that, what they want out of life. They want to live the abundant life, the overflowing life, the abundant life, all right? Or, or, or experience life in abundance, in the fullness of life. But that, that life comes from Jesus, you know, because he said, I came that you might have life more abundantly. All right, so, yeah, maybe they're not looking for abundant life. We know it's abundant life, but they're looking for life. They're looking for the fullness of what they can get out of this life. All right? And so the world, and, and they think maybe they're going to find it in money. Maybe they're going to find it in destiny, fulfilling their um, what, what they, you know, things that they want to do on earth, you know, accomplishing great things, you know, never to be forgotten, you know, doing something that will make people remember them and stuff like that. All right. Okay, that's the world. You understand. All right, but you're Christians. <laughs> Say, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. All right. Jesus came. Listen, he came that you might have life and have it in abundance in fact if we're not experiencing abundant life yet or we are we all basically experiencing more and more or we can experience more and more but if you're not living the abundant life it's not the life that he intended for you to have abundant life is his heart's desire for you he wants you to have life in abundance, to, to, to experience the fullness of life, all right? So to be everything, basically, that He called you to be. All right, so you are a Christian, and the abundant life comes from Jesus. For us, the source of life is Jesus. The source of life is not what we do or don't do. So I've, I've read le recently just many people, you know, this one says that, you should wake up in the morning and just have a, you know, get up early, go and see the sun rise, read a book, you know, experience, basically get everything out of life that you can. Do the right thing. You just do, this is one guy's philosophy of how you're going to experience it. The other guy says, listen, just get up early, work hard, go to bed late, get money, and when you retire, you're going to have abundant life, all right? The one basically says if we rest more, look more after ourselves, and just make sure everything is, is, is in sync, then we're going to have abundant life. The other guy says work hard. When you work hard, you're going to have enough money, and you're going to have abundant life, all right? That's the world's way. But Jesus said, no use you seeking abundant life. I came to give it to you as a byproduct. As a result, as fruit. Like, I'm the giver of abundant life. I want to give you abundant life. I would love to see you live life in its fullness. Experience the, the abundant life. The, the life that I came to give. It is my desire that you walk in it. <laughs> There's someone that's looking after us and his desire for us is that we walk and experience or live in the abundant life. Okay, so God just spoke to me about abundant life. Living the fullness of life. Okay, so in Jesus, it works differently. I'm going to start here. 
living abundant life according to the world or living the fullness of life according to the world is thinking more about yourself. All right, wait. The way you experience abundant life in the world is just to think more about yourself and your own life. The way of Jesus is to think less about yourself and more about Him. He thinks of you and you think of Him. All right. The way to abundant life as a Christian basically would not be to try and live abundant life. Basically, abundant life for a Christian is all in knowing Jesus. And, and I'm not saying you shouldn't desire abundant life. Like I shared earlier um, last week, everything that comes from God, you should desire. You should desire prosperity. You should desire to walk in the gifts. You should desire. So basically, you should desire abundant life, but the thing is not to try and attain. Everything that God gives, the more and the less we try and get it for ourselves, the better for us. It, the, more, the less we try and prosper, the better. More believing that He wants us to prosper will cause you to prosper. More trying to prosper, <laughs> trying to be healthy versus understanding it's the heart of the Father and He provided health as a gift. That understanding comes as you look away from yourself unto Jesus. So you find life in your body looking away from yourself unto Jesus. Trying to keep yourself healthy and strong is the exact opposite of living the abundant life. Trying to focus on yourself to try and make yourself happy, strong, fulfilled, blessed <laughs> is the opposite of the life that God wants you to have. The thing that you're searching for, He wants to give it to you freely, and He wants you to have it freely so that you never think you should earn it, work for it, and try and get it ever again. Not spend a little bit of time trying to, uh, to attain what Christ gave you freely. He gave you His joy. He gave you His peace. He gave you prosperity. He gave you health. He gave you the gifts of the Spirit. He gave you all of that. He wants you to desire it. He wants you to, to, to desire it because that's where it starts, the desire. But He never wants you to lift the finger to try and attain or to try and receive. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. So the way you're going to walk in the abundant life is to look away from basically not just the desire of it, but desire it and turn that desire, turn away from that desire and trying to fulfill the desire unto Jesus. All right, so the less you think about yourself, the happier you will be. The world say, the more you think about yourself, the happier you would be. Cut out all the negative people. You know, that's the, I'm just joking with the world's way. You mustn't get, allow any negative people. Imagine Jesus, Thomas, <laughs> Judas, <laughs> Peter. Just imagine Jesus, the people that surrounded Jesus. We, he had Judas with him. Imagine he cut out all the negative people. His whole disciples, everyone was murmuring. There was negativity all around Jesus. <laughs> You're not going to cut out all the negative people and be a positive person. That's the world's way. The world's way is like, if I just look out for my own interest more, if I just make sure no one uses and abuses me, if I make sure I look after myself and I, 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 just, I just nurture myself and look after myself and, and focus on myself, if I do that enough, I'm going to have abundance of life. And yet with the kingdom, it's the opposite. He seeks to save his life or lose it. I, I, you understand that, right? right? You, so seeking to save yourself, helping yourself, has the opposite effect. The more you look away from yourself, the more you'll receive what Christ wants you to have. Come on, I, I hope you're getting it in the right perspective. You should desire prosperity. You should desire abundant life. 
You should desire it. But as you desire it, make your wants known to God. Ask and turn back to Jesus. And when the desire comes again, say, Lord, I'm asking for the money for that building in Jesus' name. Amen. And turn back to Jesus. Look to Jesus away from yourself. That is the key to life. But listen, that's just the byproduct. <laughs> the highest form of life is a love relationship. Love. So we are called to be rec receivers or recipients of the love of the Father. And as we open our hearts for that great love of the Father, all the needs, everything we have is met fully as we embrace the love of the Father. Basically, when I say look away from yourself, I'm not saying look away from yourself and suffer. I'm saying looking, look unto the Father that loves you more than what you love yourself. Look at the Father, the heart of the Father, the ability of the Father. Start seeing Jesus. Faith comes by looking at Jesus. Faith comes by hearing. Look at Jesus and the things you desire will find its way into your life. It's a result. It's not why we look, but it's a definite result. All right, religion, don't desire things. God, ask, and you will receive. All right? Um, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added. Do you see God's heart? He wants you to have things, things, all these things. Now, things are things. He says, the, thing, the world seek these things, but your heavenly Father knows that you need them. You understand? So, seek the kingdom first. Now, if you, if you seek the kingdom first, it means there's other desires also. Oh, come on, people. If you need to seek the kingdom first, then it means it's 100% okay to desire that new house, to desire the peace. To desire the prosperity. To desire to walk in the gifts. To desire to walk in the miracles. Seek the kingdom first. Meaning there's other desires. <laughs> Seek first. <laughs> Seek first the kingdom. So God places those desires in your heart. And He wants you to project them or take them and deliver it back to Him through prayer. And allow Him. <laughs> Jesus. I think it's like we, we cannot not live abundant life as Christians. I'm, I'm just shocked at how easily we miss the life that God actually wants us to have. And, and I don't know how it gets to that point, but we actually try and get what He wants to give. And as we're trying to get what He wants to give, we are wrestling with the Father. And the Father is saying, I want to give it to you for free. I don't want you to think you've earned this. I don't want you to work for it. This is a gift. Abundant life is a gift. And you're not going to get it by thinking the seven steps that you need to do to look after yourself. Because looking after yourself is robbing you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, looking out for yourself is actually robbing you from experiencing the true life. Christian life is God looks out for you. You look unto Him. Christian life is not a selfish life. Selfishness is the rob, it robs you. And so now we still ask, but we are, mm, okay. We are living in this world. This morning I said some are accountants, some are business people, some are teachers, some are at school, some are looking for a job. We have different, different people. We are living in this world. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn about maths. <laughs> you should, this world, that you are in this world. And so there's, there's business people, there's different people that you, that this is part of life on earth. So I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. I'm just saying as you look unto Jesus, His life will flow into those areas of your life also. His victory will be manifested in your life. 
This morning I said he was victorious over the world. And the victory that we have over the world is our faith. There was a fall. And everything in this world is under a fall. It's a fallen world. But Christ redeemed us. And we are the first fruit. Christ redeemed us. So Romans 8 says the whole creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. So Christ redeemed us. We are sons of God. He liberated us from the fallen world. Now creation waits to gain entrance into this freedom. We have that freedom. So you're an, an accountant that's free from the fall of man. And full of the life of God. <laughs> you're a business person that has literally no limitations. Because God set you free from poverty. Blessed you in Christ Jesus. The benefit that we have as Christians is tremendous. But it's a byproduct of our relationship with Him. So the wisdom of God is not don't be an accountant, don't, be, don't have a job. <laughs> the wisdom of God is trust Jesus, look unto Jesus away from yourself, trust His wisdom and let it play out in the world that you are living in, where you are operating. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, uh, I'll, I'll just read it out of the New American Standard Bible. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. I said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Okay, without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is one two a rewarder also of them that seek him the, the one that comes to God must believe that he is one he is secondly he rewards <laughs> the one that comes to God must believe that he is and believe that he rewards him that seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That scripture have placed many, many believers under bondage. Because they think, oh, if I'm not in faith, I'm not pleasing to God. Now listen to this. Are you a Christian? Do you believe in Jesus? What did God say about his son Jesus? This is my beloved son, in whom I am. Well pleased. Are you in Christ? God is saying the same about you. Your faith is not causing God to be displeased with you. It, it pleases God when you believe. I'll explain. If faith is the only way that we can receive the inheritance that God left us, or things out of the hand of the Father, it pleases the Father when we believe. And it displeases the Father when we don't believe. For this reason, we're not going to get what He wants us to have. So it's displeasing to Him. <laughs> it's displeasing to Him to see His children walk in sickness. When He paid the price for them to be healed. It's displeasing to Him. They are not displeasing to Him. The concept of them not believing is displeasing. Or it's not. So without that faith... It's impossible to please Him. You please Him when you believe, because when you believe, you receive. In other words, He died for you to be healed. Now you walk in sickness. I believe or you believe, and we pray. And sickness leaves. I believe, you believe, or whoever believes, and we pray. And sickness leaves. God is pleased. Okay, so faith pleases God. Unbelief displeases God because it robs us from receiving. Oh, he of little faith. <laughs> Jesus said it. Where is your faith? Why are you not believing? Unbelieving generation. Where is your faith? Faith or lack of faith displeases God. But God is pleased. God is pleased. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Guys, I hope you... 
you know, I hope you know I preach according to, not reaction, but according to what I feel in the Spirit. So I'll be like a, um, a record that will be stuck until you hear. <laughs> I said, God is pleased in Christ. And the blood of Jesus cleansed you. The faith that you had when you believed in Jesus the first time, you received the sacrifice, God is forever pleased. You cannot displease God. The lack of faith displeases Him, not because He's displeased with you. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Faith pleases Him. Unbelief displeases Him because He hates to see you sick, broke, poor, depressed, worried. <laughs> That's why unbelief is not pleasing unto Him. Okay, thank you. I hope you get it. This is the one scripture. Imagine you believe every time I'm in unbelief, God is not pleased with me. No, he's, 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 he's still pleased with you. He really wants to get you to a place of belief. So he's rather working on your faith side than being displeased with you. He loves you. He will never, it will never change. All right. So, uh, okay, now. now he who comes to God must believe that he is. So our relationship with Jesus is based on faith. We believe that He is and we have a relationship with Him. We pursue relationship with Him. We talk with Him. We hear Him when He speaks. So abundant life for a Christian is what we've been emphasizing in this house. Is living from every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. Pastor, I just need to be myself. No, you need to be your real self. Identity crisis is really robbing you. you so, so no, you just you not just need to be yourself. You need to be be your real self in Christ, the Christ-like self. Yeah. Not I'm free, Pastor. I just want to be myself. Yeah, yeah. Be your real self in Christ. <laughs> Let's see the Christ-likeness and the nature of Christ manifested. I just need to be myself. All right, be your real self in Christ. So. We live in relationship with Jesus by faith. That faith, the first faith that we need is to believe that He is. All right? That He is. That He's present. That He's here. That He is. And with that faith, we have relationship with Him. Seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. So we have faith and by faith, we have a relationship with Jesus. And out of that, we'll start to see. He's the unseen God that loves to manifest himself. But he can only manifest himself as people believe. According to your faith, let it be done. Unto you. By faith, he's the unseen God that loves to manifest himself. He wants to manifest himself, but he can only manifest himself according to your faith in him. He who comes to God must believe that he is. And needs to believe that he's a rewarder of them that of, of him that diligently seek him. You believe that he is, you believe that he's a rewarder. You approach him by faith. So, Pastor, I want to know. If Jesus said he came to give me life and life more abundantly, how will I live that life? Look away from yourself. Don't depend on your own strength. All right. One of the ways that you know you're looking at yourself is when you live in condemnation. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't read the word enough. Even the message I preach put people in condemnation when they look unto themselves. <laughs> Even though I'm preaching, look unto Jesus, look unto Jesus. I haven't looked unto Jesus lately. So I'm condemned. So where's your eyes? Not on Jesus. <laughs> your eyes is on you not looking unto Jesus. You not reading the Bible enough. You not praying enough. You never doing enough. <laughs> so... One of the first ways you look away from yourself is actually to stop depending on yourself. And one of the first ways that you see that is you are free from condemnation. Say free from any form of condemnation. 
All right. So when you look unto yourself, you fail as a Christian. Listen, you can't get abundant life by looking at yourself. Because looking unto yourself is causing the condemnation. And whatever you do from that foundation, out of condemnation, is dead works. Now, we don't understand why we, when we try and do certain things, it's not giving the life, because the reason we do it is because of condemnation. The motivation is no longer love. Love for people, love for His kingdom. The motivation became condemnation. I should do more for God. I should read more Bible. I should even look unto Jesus more. I haven't looked unto Him more. Okay, so I'll just make it simple. Condemnation is not that I killed someone and I feel bad. Condemnation is I'm not, I'm not praying in tongues enough. I don't feel spiritual. I feel like I'm not trusting God and I should. I'm in unbelief. I'm, an un I'm a believer, but I walk in so much unbelief. I feel so bad. <laughs> So, Marnes, you're not going to work up faith by condemnation and get some faith out of that. The condemnation shows you where your trust is and where your eyes are looking. This word is crucial for your life. This is crucial for your life. Out of condemnation, you start to do good things. You start to do better things. You start to change what you do. And out of condemnation, the things that you do is not producing the life that you think it will bring. <laughs> so we're looking unto yourself the first red light that you are looking at yourself is condemnation the other manifestation the two ugly twins is self-righteousness <laughs> the one is condemnation the next thing is judging others yeah you guys are not as holy as you your relationship with jesus is so so shallow i'm so deep I know him more than you. So <laughs> self-righteousness. Co condemning others for not being where you are. All right? So <laughs> self-righteousness and condemnation. Two ugly twins coming from the same mother. <laughs> Trusting in yourself, depending on yourself. Looking unto Jesus, the first thing would be to, you know the messages we've preached in this house. Stop depending on self. The only way you will have freedom, no condemnation, no self-righteousness, is with your eyes on Jesus. There is no condemnation, but you can experience condemnation as a Christian. But there is none. Romans 8 verse 1 says there's no condemnation. So if you experience even a drop of condemnation anywhere, even through my messages, you feel condemned with what I'm saying because you're not living up to my standard or something. It's not me condemning you. It's your own heart condemning you because you are still depending on yourself trying to be something. I'm not good enough. I'm super good. <laughs> Just as bad. <laughs> I'm not good enough. Well, I'm better than them. <laughs> That's just as bad. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Out of away from condemnation unto Jesus, where there, now the experience of no condemnation is your portion. The experience of not being self-righteous because you've been declared righteous is your portion. Not works righteousness, but faith righteousness. <laughs> righteousness by faith. I received it as a gift. Yes, I'm holy and righteous. You are right, but it's a gift. So are you. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Abundant life comes when our eyes are on Jesus and we start to believe and see what He did for us and who we are because of what He did. Ah, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so now, <laughs> now instead of madness trying to work up faith, faith comes by hearing. Because my eyes are on Jesus. I'm looking at Jesus. I'm depending at Je on Jesus. I'm looking at Jesus. My, my eyes are on Jesus. I basically decide that I live to know Him more. All right. 
practically, what can you do? Purposefully live to know Jesus more. Have, have that, that purpose. Purposefully live to know Jesus more. 